Yeah, one minute na lang ano. Uh, simple housekeeping rules. Uh, everybody should mute. Tapos, ito lang in person na na magsalita. Then, uh, we'll talk to uh, Pia. Siya ang master of ceremony siya ata ngayon. Especially, uh, pagpasalamat ako sa inyo dahil uh, nandito tayo ngayon at may, may guest tayo regarding sa commercial rent and other programs from the government. Mapag-uusapan natin ngayon. At may guest nga tayo, si Kuya Rolly. Uh, siya nito. Uh, first of all, check our website. We have also Instagram. We have Facebook. Uh, Pia, may Twitter na ba? YouTube. Alam ko may YouTube na eh, no? Ayan. YouTube. Instagram. Ayan. Sa PS, PBSA natin. Kaya, ano natin, gamitin natin yung tools na yun to promote everyone and to help everyone's business, especially this pandemic time na COVID. Uh, give the floor to Tim Pia. All right, can you hear me, guys? Okay. Um, good evening. Thank you for each and every one of you for being here. I think I'll be feedback. Ako. Hang on for a sec. Yeah, sorry. So, good evening. Thank you for each and every one of you for being here with us tonight. We are very pleased to be able to welcome those of you that have been with us at every meeting we have in person or virtually, as well as those who are new and first time to attend our meeting. Tonight, we are proud to be able to host another informative and beneficial meeting via Zoom conference. Before we get started, I would like to express my sincere appreciation to all of you who generously spare their time to make this conference meeting come together to become successful. Special shout out to Ms. Marjorie Newman, to our president, Mr. Bayani Alcantara, Mr. Glenel, and everybody. We couldn't have done this without you. Housekeeping rules, as um, President Bayani mentioned earlier, mute your uh, microphone where you're not talking. Please raise your hand if you want to speak up. We will be having a Q&A portion after the guest speaker's speech. For easy and faster flow, you can type and send your questions to Ms. Newman or here at the chat tab on the Zoom, Zoom app. Stay seated and stay present. In today's meeting, we will be learning more about the commercial eviction protection and a small business grant program with our special guests, the Minister of Municipal Affairs and MLA for Southwest Edmonton, and Assistant Deputy Minister for Economic Development, Trade, and Tourism. Today's meeting will be fun and full of learning. So a very warm welcome to each and every one of you. Sit back, listen and learn. Now let's call on Ms. Bing Bang Agasino of A4 Oriental Bake Shop to lead us in prayer. Bang mute. Sorry, kain nagda nagsasalita na pang ako na kam mute ako. Okay. Ah, uh, good evening everyone. So, uh yeah, uh, I am so honored to be um in the presence of you guys. So let's go to the presence of the Lord. Uh, let's bow down our head and close our eyes. Father, we just want to thank you for tonight, for us we gather once again. Give us the listening ears and understanding minds. Bless all the speakers and bless all my co-business owners. And we bless you and glorify you alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good. Thank you so much, Ms. Agostino. To introduce our first guest speaker for tonight's conference, let's call on Ms. Treasurer, Ms. Loida Lomanlan of Loida Homes. Good evening, everyone. It's an honor to introduce our guest for tonight, uh, MLA Casey Madu of Edmonton Southwest. Um, 
I consider him as one of us. He's also an immigrant. He and his family moved here in 2005. And he has vast experience, not just in the legal profession. He also worked at the Alberta Hospital in the patient food services. He has background with uh, Legal Aid Alberta and Government of Alberta. So he's very experienced when it comes to policy making, pushing to get things done. And that's why he was elected. He's really passionate about uh, helping people. And uh, throughout uh, his attendance with PBSA, I've seen him communicate with, with us, our group, and uh, we consider him not just one of us, somebody called him the adopted son or adopted brother of the Filipino community. And it's an honor to have him because uh, he listens. You know, he spent time with us uh, one afternoon after the event we had with, with the Philippine Heritage Month. And he spent the afternoon answering questions. So he really cares about the, the business people in the community, you know, especially the Filipino community. So he's got, if I read his background, we'll be here all night. But all I can say is it's an honor to have uh, Minister Casey Madhu. He's hardworking. He listens uh, to the people and he engages with uh, what we have to ask him and he gives us information where to find the information and gives us tips on what level of government to be approached and i think those are important for us when business people they want to reach out to the right department and and he's willing to to guide us not just brushing off those questions so i i welcome minister casey madu and thank you very much for joining us again tonight it's an honor. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you so much, uh, Lorida. And thank you to all of you, the president of PBSA and all of the board of directors. As may as, I mean, Lorida, I want to thank you for that wonderful introduction. I, I have always been proud to call myself you know, your son, not, not, you know, and, and one, of, one of your own. Your community is one that I have been very clear about, privately and publicly, that is so dear to my heart. I consider each and every one of you as, fr as friends and family. So I want to thank you. You know, it's always an honor to be amongst you people because in my mind, the, the Filipino community represents what makes our province and country great. And I truly believe that if we are going to overcome all of the challenges that we face, that the values that you represent, those values of hard work, work ethic, uh, you know, a free enterprise, family, and you know, love of friends and neighbors and dedication to faith, those are the things that are going to help us overcome periods of ad, uh, you know, adversity and economic stagnation. So in your community, you will find um, the, the beauty of our province, the great immigrant success story, you know, where you have great business-minded individuals, professionals, and those who care for us at all levels of society, different sectors. So I do want to thank the Business Society for having me here on this uh, Zoom tonight. The second of my participation with, with you uh, through this medium. And although we can't continue to meet in person, I am pleased to see that the society continues to work hard uh, to ensure that the COVID-19 restrictions that we put in place, uh, you know, are alleviated and so that business and life can return to normal. It is my pleasure to speak to you on behalf of the Premier of Alberta and the entire government of Alberta about what we continue to do to support businesses. I do want to thank uh, the assist, uh, our Assistant Deputy Minister from Economic Development, Trade and Tourism. I believe she's on the line, correct? 
Thank you. I, I, I do want to thank her uh, for being here as well tonight. The government has taken significant steps to help Alberta businesses get the relief and support needed to weather this pandemic and to prepare for recovery. Uh, for instance, we have provided legislation and an and up, upcoming regulation that would cover the period from March 17 to August 31st and would apply to commercial tenant with tenancy agreement that would be eligible for the CECRA program, but whose landlord have chosen not to participate in that program. Commercial lease agreement where tenants have had to close their business due to public health orders or have had their business revenue declined by 20% or more as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Our government is ensuring private sector employers have immediate financial relief with WCB premiums deferred for one year until early 2021. That means employers who have already paid their WCB premium for 2020, 2021 are eligible for a rebate or credit. And for small and medium sized businesses, the government is also covering 50% of the premium when it is due. The average small business is expected to save about $1,000 this year. And the average medium business is expected to save about $20,000. Paying 50% of small and medium private sector WCB premium for 2020 will cost government approximately $350 million. This just goes to show that our government is committed to supporting Alberta businesses, but in particular small businesses, because we fundamentally believe that small businesses are the bone, the backbone of our economy. Additionally, our government is working to stand up for businesses by freezing education property taxes at 2019 levels and provided the businesses with a six month education property tax deferral. We are deferring corporate income tax payment to August 1, 2020 interest free. We are also introducing a 90 day utility payment relief and providing a two month filing deadline extension for annual returns with Alberta corporate registry. As we move forward, friends, into this relaunch, we are working to ease the impacts of new, business, new measures businesses are having to adapt. This government that I am part of is also committing up to $200 million in funding for eligible businesses and nonprofits to access up to $5,000 to offset a portion of the cost to reopen their businesses. Alberta businesses are the backbone of our economy, as I said before. This government understands how necessary it is to provide support in these trying times. So, you know, as I said, we are a government that is pro business, pro family pro-investment, we want to make sure that everyone who is in this province uh, have the potential and the ability to do well. Whether you are a business owner, whether you are a professional, whether you are in the public service, whether you are, uh, and including our families, uh, you know, our friends and neighbors, that this is the province where you can come to and do well. You know, your, your experience as a community is very similar to my own experience. I always tell you the story of how, when I came to this country, my first employment was at the patient food services at the University of Alberta Hospital. All I did there was to make meals and wash dishes. But if, if, someone, tell, uh, if, if someone told me then that I would be here at this point in time, I, I, I mean, I would say that is not possible. That right there, when we say, when we talk about the Alberta advantage, that is exactly what we are talking about. That it doesn't matter where you come from, it doesn't matter your tribe or your creed, that if you come to this province and work hard, that you can achieve your God-given potential. So with that, I want to thank all of you. As you know, I, I'm looking at all of the faces here. Everyone, everyone I see here are my friends. 
So I do want to thank you, and I'm so proud that you are doing well and keeping safe out there. Thank you, Lorida. Thank you, uh, Minister Madhu. So on behalf of PBSA, I'd like to thank Minister Casey Madhu for sharing his time and for always making himself available to the Filipino community in Edmonton. Thank you very much. My At pleasure. this point, let us welcome the Assistant Deputy Man Minister of Economic Development, Trade and Tourism, uh, Michelle Evans. Michelle, do you have uh, any addition or clarification? Well, listen, thank you so much for having me here today and, and joining Minister Madhu and sharing some of the work that we're doing. Um, one of the things I haven't told Minister Madhu is he happens to be my MLA as well. So I'm really pleased that he's uh, available to represent us uh, in this part of Edmonton. Um, one of the things uh, that I'll just add is we have been very busy working on implementing a number of the programs that Minister Madhu has talked about. Uh, we're, we're rapidly finalizing all of the rules and regulations uh, for the Commercial Tenancy Protection Act. So I'm happy to answer any questions that you have on that. Um, and then finally, we're also uh, putting all of the finishing pieces together and testing the, the systems for the, the Small and Medium Enterprise Grant this week. Uh, so if all goes well, uh, we should have some good news for everyone next week uh, about when uh, that program is launched. So, so again, I'm happy to answer any questions that people have on that. So I think Minister Madhu gave you all of the information that you need about the high level parts of the program. And really, I'm, I'm here to answer any questions you have. We can talk about pretty much anything and I'm happy to, to do my best to try to give you some of those information pieces. Thank you very much, uh, Michelle. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Truly appreciate it. Thank you. And so now we'll move on to the Q&A. And let me start from... Marjorie. The Sorry. Marjorie, yes. Marjorie, please, one second. Can, uh, Michelle, thank you so much for making yourself available. And I'm so glad to know that you live in <laughs> South West. That makes me happy. So thank you. Yes. I, I, <laughs> I agree. It is. I, I had to get that in. I see him enough that I never get to, you know, have to say those things from time to time. <laughs> you finally said it. Now you know, Minister Madhu, and you know what to do. Anyway. <laughs> oh, and by the way, congratulations to Minister Madhu for introducing Bill 29 today, the Local Authorities Election Amendment Act. But we will not discuss that. We, that will be another conversation for you, Minister Madhu. Okay, going back to the question. So our first question here is like two pages, but I'm sorry. This is from Mr. Rolando Palaypay. I won't be able to read everything. So uh, he sent an email to uh, Honorable Casey Madhu on April 16. And then, uh, so I suggest, uh, Mr. Palaypay, if you can uh, forward this email to me, I would be happy to forward this to uh, the Minister, the Office of the Minister of Economic Development, Trade and Tourism. And also, his first inquiry here is to date, there is no known assistance to commercial property owners whose main source of income are from the rents from the retail professional spaces. With the COVID, not all tenants can pay their rent in full due to either closure of, or partial limited operation. Your second paragraph is uh, the, the federal program that mentions about the CECRA. Your third paragraph mentions about the city, deferral of property tax, but this should be addressed to the city because now our guests are from the provincial government. And then you mentioned about the ATB uh, province mandated a bank to help Alberta entrepreneur to succeed. So that's just an explanation here. And you actually have a suggestion here. Uh, intercede to put a cap on the private lender's interest rates and lending fees. This should be regulated at this time. And with the uncertain times of economic recovery, forcing a property owner to agree to sell now at the call of the lenders should be suspended at least six months to one year uh, once economic crisis is lifted. And the property tax, again, this, is, uh, this should be addressed by the city of Edmonton during the emergency should be adjusted to help property owners to cover operating costs. And also, Mr. Rolando Palaypay, just to let you know that the government of Alberta actually has on its website a link or a survey that you can uh, also um, you know, give your thoughts. But I would be happy to forward this email to the office of uh, economic development, trade, and tourism. Do you want to respond to that? 
Michelle? Yeah, so I'll just do a couple of things on that. Um, I know a lot of our, our sort of medium and larger businesses are struggling with, with their own rent and with or their, their leases and their mortgages that, that they have uh, obligations that they have to meet. Uh, there are a few programs that some people are not always aware of. BDC and EDC do have some mid to large size uh, supports for employers. Um, so what I would uh, encourage you to do is go on to the BizConnect website, uh, the www.alberta.ca slash BizConnect. Um, I know those programs have been slow to come, uh, but I understand now that they are available, uh, that many of the banks are supporting them. Um, we know that many of the banks have been uh, and willing to, to do some deferrals on mortgages and other things for large corporations. Uh, so again, I would just really encourage you to have the conversation with your financial, financial institution. If you are having some, some of those kinds of struggles, they may be able to, to make some of those things available for you. Um, and again, you know, we'll, we'll take the, the feedback in uh, from the letter in terms of interest rates and fees. Those are probably things that uh, the Treasury Board and Finance uh, and, and sort of federal, the federal minister will, would say that are, are, are difficult to accomplish. We've got very low interest rates right now and, and sort of pushing and putting some more uh, constraints on that might be, might be a bit of a challenge. Uh, but we, I, I will say that we are working very closely with ATB uh, on a number of their entrepreneurship supports. And there are some really good supports that they have available uh, within the province. So uh, again, we'll continue to work with them and encourage uh, that those kinds of supports and programs uh, continue. They've got great booster programs for, for startup entrepreneurs. Um, we do have the business link if you haven't uh, checked out some of the supports and, and tools from the business link as well. Uh, so again, there's lots of programs and supports. It's, it's one thing that we can try to help uh, direct the one that's most meaningful for you. Okay, thank you very much. So I have a, another question here. Will Bill 23 covers uh, tenants that are currently on a month-to-month -month lease or is just for the long lease, like, you know, 12 months, two years, three years or five years? Yeah, so great question. The way that the, the act is drafted, it doesn't get into specifics about how your lease is actually arranged or the specific payment cycle that you're, you're in. So what, the, what it does is it, it talks about, about rent in, in a broad term, commercial rent, rent that falls in under a commercial lease. So if you are a tenant that is within one of the, the eligible tenant parameters that will, will be appearing in the regulation, then it, it would apply to either month to month uh, commercial rent or a full-on lease. So if you have a written lease, uh, that would be uh, under, it would be eligible in, in that circumstance. If it's just, if you're just paying on a monthly basis with no formal lease, uh, again, this is covering commercial leases. So, so that's sort of the, the, the nuance. So again, I, it's hard for me to know without understanding all of the specifics of your lease, but, but that's what I would say. And as, as Minister Madhu outlined, there's sort of three categories of tenants that will be eligible under the program under the under the legislation i shouldn't call it a program legislation um, it will be those those tenants whose landlords who are eligible for secra that have had a 70 percent reduction in their in their revenues um, and their landlords don't, don't apply it will be those tenants who have been required to close as a result of public health order or those, those tenants who have had a revenue reduction of 25 percent or more as a result of of COVID, of the pandemic uh, impacts. Okay, thank you. So how about tenants whose lease will expire by July 2020? Will yeah, great start? question. And so the way that the act is drafted, many commercial leases have automated renewals or, or other terms. The, the leases that, it covers leases that were entered into uh, the period of the, the act. Um, so I have to just go back and remember, I think there is, uh, once you enter into a lease following the end of the public health order, I think that you wouldn't be eligible, but so it depends on how your lease rolls over. So, so that's one that I'll have, if you want to send me separately, I'll have the team take a look at the specific clauses in the lease to just give, we can't give legal advice, but I would say, you know, we'll be able to, to take a look at that and, and give a little bit of a sense of, of how we think that that kind of situation might apply. Thank you. Here's another question here. I plan to close my business in Ju end of July. Am I still covered under Bill 23? I mean, close permanently. Yeah. So, so great question. Tricky answer. Um, in the, this is the thing that the landlords are very worried about. Um, you know, again, the, this is not an excuse not to pay your rent or to pay your obligations. 
uh, that are, are due. What this does is it prevents you from being evicted as a result of, of a reduction in revenue. It does not change the, the, the rent or the obligations that you owe to your landlord. So I, I kind of answer this question very carefully to say you would not be, you would not be forced to be evicted but this does not mean that you would not have an obligation to pay the rent for the period that, that you were still in your business. Okay, yeah, thank you. Um, are there any legal actions to be taken against landlords who would not participate in the program? Or is it even covered on Bill 23? Yeah, so what Bill 23 does is it creates um, it creates legislation and it, it enables tenants that, that perhaps wouldn't uh, have that ability to, to address with their landlords the fact that they were not providing some level of assistance or relief or, or threatening uh, you know, the eviction component. So, so the remedies are those remedies that would have been within your, your lease. So depending on how your lease was drafted with your, your tenant, some leases have mediation, um, some, some do not. So, so it, again, it depends on the specific parameters of how your lease was drafted, whether it would go to mediation first, but certainly ultimately the courts are the solution. And if, if your landlord is, is threatening eviction and you fall in within this act, this, the, that you would have lost your revenue of more than 25% um, as a result of the COVID pandemic, uh, you would have the remedy through the courts. So this would give you the, the confidence that, that they would be offside of the legislation through the courts. So it would be tested through the courts. Yeah, okay, thank you. So as a tenant, what will happen if I cannot make the 25% contribution? How does Bill 23 protect me? Okay, so again, what I would tell you is that the, the act is quite different than the, the SECRA program, the Commercial Rent Emergency Assistance Program. Uh, the act is, again, simply legislation to prevent tenants from being evicted. It does not, unlike the secret program, obligate the landlord to reduce your, your rent to a certain threshold or require you to pay a certain amount of, of rent over a period of time. What it does obligate is you and your landlord coming together to come up with a payment agreement that makes sense for your situation and their situation. So, so if you're under the secret program, and, and your landlord applies through that program and puts that through you, it automatically forces a, a, a reduction in your rent and obligates you to pay a component of, of that reduced rent. This is not a program in that way. This is legislation to prevent eviction. And so what it does for you is creates the conditions for you and your landlord to have a conversation and then create the payment plan that makes most sense for your business as you understand how your business might come back in terms of some of those changes. Okay, thank you. So will Bill 23 coverage be extended if public health measures remain in effect? So, <laughs> so public health measures have expired, right? <laughs> okay. and the minister, so minister I can't speak to that, Michelle. <laughs> so as you know, uh, Marjorie, uh, we lifted the public health uh, uh, emergency on, I believe it was on June the 15th. And so we, the public health uh, measures are no longer in place, but we continued uh, by uh, some of the um, uh, measures that were put in place in order to protect public safety. There are some of, for example, some of the orders that were put in place by the Chief Medical Officer of Health gets towards making sure that people continue, that uh, folks continue to comply with social distancing rules and, and, and public health care measures and all of those things, isolation and things like that, all of those things continued so that um, the, the Ministry of Health and Alberta Health Services and the Chief Medical Officer of Health have the tools you know, to continue to do their work until the, we, we see the end of this pandemic. Okay, thank you. Do you have anything to add, Michelle, to that? Or? Again, and specifically to the, the, the Commercial Rent Act, it does cover the period up until August 31st, as Minister Madhu had mentioned. So, so it does give you that ability to, to deal with prevention of evictions up until August 31st. So that does go beyond that. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, I'm using my cell phone and I'm not seeing the questions. <laughs> If anybody has questions, so you can just uh, 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 ask the question yourself. And if, does anybody have any questions? 
So anybody would like to ask while they're here? So uh, we we could get all the answers that we need for now. Attorney Joseph Angeles, Mr. President, do you have any questions? No, just clarification uh, regarding. Uh, oh, my name is Bayani. Regarding the uh, March 17 to 31st, did you extend that one, uh, Michelle or uh, Mr. Madhu? Is it covered by the SECRA, uh, March 17 to 31? Okay, so so I'll take this one, Minister. Um, so so the commercial. So there's sort of two things. Two things happening. The federal SECRA program. Uh, is in place for the three months, April, May, and June. It reduces rent for, for tenants for that period of time. And you have until August 31st to apply for that federal program. The, the legislation from the province also goes until between, between when we initiated the, the public health order on March 17th through to August 31st. It covers and prevents eviction for that, that whole period of time. Good. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. So for the SICRA, uh, you have to qualify, the, the tenant has to qualify if you reduce or below 70%, right? Yeah, so, so the way that the SICRA program works is it looks at your average revenue for, um, your, your average revenue across three months, um, April, May, and June. And it takes the average revenue of that, compares it to a, a different year and says, was it reduced more than 70%? And if it was, then you would be eligible within the SECRA program for that reduced rent and, and your landlord could choose to apply. We will apply a very similar calculation, but our calculation on the rent eviction legislation will be 25% for that same three month period. So it's much, many, many, many more businesses will become eligible uh, under that program to, to prevent it. So if, uh, because that right now the tenant is in the mercy of the landlord, if the landlord doesn't apply for the CECRA, then what will the government do to them? Yeah, so, so if the lender doesn't apply to CECRA, the landlord, under the, under the legislation that's before the house, it's not yet passed, uh, the legislation is still before the house. It, that legislation would require the la would prevent the landlord from evicting that tenant. So you wouldn't be evicted if you didn't pay your rent. Now again, I'll just say it again because the landlords will be very upset if I don't. This is not an excuse not to pay your rent. If you can pay some part, all of your rent, we really would like you to do that because landlords are businesses too. Yes, I understand. Good. I think there's a question from Attorney Joseph. Attorney Joseph, can you just ask the question, please? I think it's just been answered that it hasn't passed, the bill hasn't been passed. But are we, is it, in terms of negotiating with landlords, is it safe to assume that this is kind of a done deal? Can we put it on the table in terms of negotiating with them? Or do we try to figure things out between the landlord and the tenant first and just wait for the royal assent for this bill? Yeah, and we... what I would say that, that again, I, the, the bill is not a done deal till it passes in the house. I know. Um, and, but it is retroactive, so it's they cannot evict anyone if it does pass uh, from the day that it was passed. It, it was introduced in the house, so it's effective as of like you can't evict anybody that was since the bill was in, introduced on uh, June sixteenth. So uh, you can have some confidence that the landlords are constrained uh, just simply because the bill is in before the house. Um, it has passed second reading. Um, so it still has to go through committee of the whole, third reading, and then obviously royal assent. So um, I would expect, uh, Minister Madhu, we, it will happen within the next couple of weeks at, at most. Uh, many of the landlords have a lot of concerns about the bill, as you can imagine. Um, and so they will be I, expecting asking government for a number of things in the interim. Um, so I, I would say, Joseph, the, the thing that would be begin to have, have those conversations with your landlord, it's always better to start a conversation, uh, but recognize that they may be reluctant. Some, some of the more difficult landlords may be more reluctant until the bill fully passes. No, no, um, um, Joseph, uh, Michelle is correct. I don't foresee a, pro a problem with the bill not being passed. And it's, it's a matter of weeks, uh, at the most couple of weeks, before we get to that particular point.
thank you so much. Okay, anybody has any questions? You know, Minister Madhu just finished a cabinet meeting that he chaired. So, <laughs> and Michelle also, this is no I, longer. I, I do know that because I was in the <laughs> room with him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Michelle, this is all already outside of her working hours, but they're still working, they're serving us, and we do no working hours 24 7. <laughs> <laughs> You're like call centers, That's truly right. public servants. Thank you very much. So, anybody, guys, do you still have questions while we have them on the line? Well, for the sake of just asking a question, so yes, um, so I'm looking at the bill now, the proposed bill. So, Mr. Casey, you're saying two weeks? So, the, so the bill has, second reading of the bill has passed. And it, 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 I mean, it will now go, it's not before the committee of the whole. Okay. Uh, after that, it will be the third reading of the bill. The third reading of the bill is the final reading of the bill. And my sense is that would ha likely happen before the end of the week. And then by early next week, it should be on its way to um, the Lieutenant Governor uh, to, for Royal Ascent. Uh, so um, again, give or take two weeks. But I think it's important because the landlords are aware that that bill is before the floor of the house and going through the process um, there's nothing wrong, as Michelle rightly noted, to begin those conversations with your landlord. They know and expect that the bill will pass. And so, but, and so, you know, having the conversation with the landlord, I will, I will at least give you a sense of, 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 of some of the things that they are prepared to, uh, to work with you on, especially given the fact that if there's going to be a, if there's going to be some form of an arrangement around uh, payment of rent and things like that, and then both parties can now begin to advise their minds to some of the issues that, that, that they need to address. But, but, but give and take uh, two weeks. But I, I, I mean, it, it could happen before then, but give and take two weeks. All right. May I again? Please. So that's for the retroactive application, so how do you visualize assisting those people who have been locked out already? and their assets seized by the landlord. Yeah, so unfortunately, Joseph, the bill cannot undo things that have already I been know. done. Yeah. So, so if you have already had assets seized prior to June 16th, the bill does not unfortunately protect you in that situation. So, you know, one of the things that we have heard is, is some landlords have proceeded to that. Uh, again, regrettably, there's, there's not much that this, that this particular bill does in those situations. Um, and there are some, some tenants, to be very clear, that have been in default well before this bill. So, you know, this is, this is the challenge that we have is, is the bill is effect, it can't undo things that have already been done. So if, if you've already been evicted or they've already seized assets, it's, it's this bill, if it, if it happened prior to June 16th, this bill is not going to help that situation. Thanks. Thank you. So, uh, are we still, um, I check on the website, Government of Alberta's website, and I don't see yet the eligibility requirements, you know, for the uh, small business grant. That's because I'm still drafting them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. <laughs> Thank They're you. Almost done. But let me give you a little bit of a preview, Marjorie, about how yeah, we're going. Okay, to please. That. Thank you. Yeah. So, so very similar. What we're using for the small business grant, um, and I, I laugh. I say I. I have a fantastic team that supports me. Uh, they are busy writing right now. Um, and so, so what we are doing is it's for the the, at the small and medium enterprise relaunch grant. It is uh, those businesses again who have been required to close or significantly curtail their businesses as a result of COVID. And in this instance, significantly curtail is going to be defined as a 50% revenue reduction. So if you've had a 50% revenue reduction, um, and there's going to be some calculations on, on the application process, so you'll be required to report either your April or May rev annual revenue, monthly revenue, sorry, April or May monthly revenues, uh, for this year, as well as your April or May revenues for 2019. 
And then if that is, is more than 50% reduction, you would be effectively eligible if you were one of those businesses that had that reduction because of the COVID crisis. Um, so, so hopefully that just keeps it really simple. There's a little bit more, a simple program is never simple. There's more to it. If you were a business that is seasonal or you are a business that has not got a full year, we have some of that considered. Um, we are also considering those businesses um, you have to provide either your business registration number or if you're registered as a nonprofit, your society number. So, so there's those, those kinds of things that you'll have to be able to provide. Um, if, uh, if you have multiple physical locations, so, um, you know, I like to use uh, Tim Hortons as an example. If you are a Tim Hortons owner and you own you have a single business number, but you have multiple stores. You have a store in St. Albert and you have a store in Calgary and you have a store uh, in Edmonton. The way that we've designed the program is those physical locations will all be eligible. So we've oh. thought through a number. <laughs> wow. so it's, it's based, it's a relaunch grant to support businesses in, in those needs. And so that's how we've designed it. We think we're okay in that, in that approach. So that's again, more information next week including all of those specific details. So, so again, just bear with us. We're, we're just testing systems and just testing all of this information. So uh, we're almost there. Okay. So we're looking at like a week or two weeks timeline for implementation. I believe we are, we are being told we have less than a week. So check back oh, with me on Monday. Even better. <laughs> check back with me on Monday. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. So does anybody, anybody has any questions? If there's no more questions, then um, I can give it back to Pia. Last call before. Oh, sorry. Last call. <laughs> too many, too many monitors here. <laughs> so, last call for your question. If there's no more question, let's call on our president, Mr. Bayani Alcantara, for uh, the closing remarks. Uh, first of all, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us uh, for today. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, our guest speaker, uh, Minister Casey Madhu, uh, for your time. Even though you have already a previous uh, uh, meeting before us, uh, you still have a time for us. And also for Assistant Deputy Minister Michelle Evans for Economic Development, Trade and Tourism. Thank you very much, ma'am. And for all the uh, uh, participants here, uh, especially Glenn, who's doing the Zoom, Marjorie, uh, Pia, and Loida, for everyone participated here, thank you very much. Please check our website, PPSA website. We have also the YouTube account. We have the Twitter account, Instagram account. So we're all have a social media right now. And PBSA is looking forward to more. Uh, fruitful uh, programs uh, during the COVID and post-COVID so we can help also Alberta rise to the occasion uh, debating this uh, COVID. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you everyone. Good night and uh, maraming salamat. Mabuhay Filipino. Thank you. Thank you so much everyone. Take care. Thank Michelle. you. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.